Uh, it's Thursday, September the 19th, and I continue to read and wonder my way through Deuteronomy. And today we're going to finish the first chapter. Yay! Today it's Deuteronomy 1, verses 34 to 46. And, you know, the Deuteronomy is three sort of sermons given by Moses um, to Israel, to the people, right at the end of the Exodus, right? Obviously it has to be because you know that Moses doesn't make it into the Promised Land, Right? So these are um, three sermons. Uh, Moses looks out over the past uh, and present and hope for the future, all that kind of stuff. So we're still focusing on the past right now. And we've been hearing about the Exodus, how it began, how short it could have been. Um, God led them right there to Cana um, and told them essentially to go in and invade the Amorites. And they, oh, wow, they weren't so sure. So they sent uh, 12 spies um, into the land. And the spies came back and said, yeah, the land is really, really good. In fact, they brought fruit and everything. Um, but the Amorites are freaking giants. Uh, and so they were intimidated. They were afraid. They did not invade. Um, and well, let's see what happens as Moses recalls it for them. So here it is, Deuteronomy 1, 34 to 46. When the Lord heard your words... He was wrathful and swore, not one of these, not one of this evil generation shall see the good land that I swore to give to your ancestors. Except Caleb, son of Jephunneh, he shall see it. And to him and his descendants, I will give the land on which he set foot because of his complete fidelity to the Lord. Even with me, the Lord was angry on your account saying, you also shall not enter there. Joshua, son of Nun, your assistant shall enter there. Encourage him. For he is the one who will secure Israel's possession of it. And as for your little ones, who would, <clears throat> and as for your little ones who you thought would become booty, your children who today do not know right from wrong, they shall enter there. To them I will give it, and they shall take back possession of it. But as for you, journey back into the wilderness in the direction of the Red Sea. You answered me, we've sinned against the Lord. We are ready to go up and fight just as the Lord our God commanded us. So all of you strapped on your battle gear and thought it easy to go up into the hill country. The Lord said to me, say to them, do not go up and do not fight, for I am not in the midst of you. Otherwise, you will be defeated by your enemies. Although I told you, you would not listen. You rebelled against the command of the Lord and presumptuously went up into the hill country. The Amorites who lived in that hill country then came out against you and chased you as bees do. They beat you down and seer as far as Harma. And when you returned and wept before the Lord, the Lord would neither heed your voice nor pay any attention. After that, you stayed at Kaddish as many days as you did. So, <laughs> I apologize. I stumbled there in the middle. <laughs> I really am. I'm not reading entirely cold. I went to seminary. I've read this stuff. And, you know, I do read my Bible. Um, but I don't think I'd sort of read it as carefully. as uh, That line says, As for your little ones who you thought would become booty, uh, your children who today do not know right from wrong, uh, they shall enter there. I just laughed at your children becoming booty. <laughs> it just sounded silly to me. Um, what that means is your children you thought would be victims of war. Basically, right? The booty is the spoils of war. Uh, and, and yeah, the, the Israelites were, were afraid that their children would, would be killed if they went in and invaded the Amorites. So, yeah, so that's what it means. It just made me giggle. Anyway, that's nothing to do with nothing. Uh, although maybe we do need to wonder sometimes why it is we laugh in the midst of, I don't know, church or prayer or, or, or scripture. And you'll read something and it might be, um, well, like this, it's, it's, it's pretty serious stuff. Uh, and then we laugh. I think I laugh sometimes to give myself relief. I, I need a little bit of space from what's going on. Um, yeah, maybe I'm taking this personally and I just need a little bit of space because it's, oh, yeah, you've got me. See, what's going on in the story for me uh, a couple of neat things, actually, uh, but but basically, I, I recognize the Israelites. They were afraid, and then God, God got really mad at them. They said, oh, okay, I don't know, we're going to go do it. And God said, it's too late. And they said, no, 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 we'll show you, we're going to go do it. And off they went. 
Uh, although God had said, don't do it now because I'm not coming with you. And you're right. The Amorites are freaking big and they are going to beat you because I'm not with you. And so they went and they lost out. Um, I do that sometimes. <laughs> I have moments. I mean, I have that in my in my in my personal life. You know, if, if there's a a small thing you you forget to do, you try to do a bigger thing to make up for it. You know, if uh, I've never done this, <laughs> I really haven't. But if I've missed my mother's birthday, you know, uh, you know, two days later there would be a truckload of flowers, that kind of thing. You know what I mean? Just like, oh no, no, I can do it. Uh, or or more akin to this one, someone asks you to do something and you forget to do it. So then I said, well, I asked you to get milk. I really needed the milk and you didn't get it for me. Go, oh man, I'm sorry. Okay, I'll go get it now. I, I, I don't need it now. Uh, but you go anyway and you come back with milk and cream and butter and just like, there, I'm just so sorry. You want to show that you're sorry. I get it. But God doesn't want them to be sorry. God wants them to trust. Right? That's really what it comes down to. God wants them to trust. Uh, when God says, I'm with you, you can go and you can overcome this obstacle. And here we're talking about invading the Amorites, and I have issues around that kind of uh, invasion, military violence, all that stuff. Um, but if I take it out of a war game and look at it as just a, a challenge, something that looks insurmountable, Something that just looks too big to tackle. And God says, no, but you can. And I, uh, I don't know. And then I start to get strategic about it. And then I have this, oh, I blew it. Now God, God's mad. Um, it may not be that God's mad. It's just that God's disappointed. I know I should have done the thing. So then I'm going to go try even harder on something else. You ever had that moment where you walk past somebody who might be asking for, for, for money? Um, you know, they're, they're just out there with the, with their cup or their buck, whatever it is. And, the, and, 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 you know, I know I, I do give such people money. Not always, it's just some of them I do. And, but every now and again, I'll, 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 I'll go past one and go like, no. And then I'll think, oh, why didn't I, why, why didn't I stop and give her, him, whatever? Why didn't I help them? And, and then I'll, and I'll, it'll, it'll eat at me. And then what I'll discover is by the next day, I'm now giving a uh, hundred bucks to some organization that helps the marginalized, helps the, helps the hungry. Um, I'll, I'll overdo it because I, I did, did. Now, I don't think that's actually a bad idea. I'm pretty sure that uh, <laughs> the second harvest and, and, and food banks in my area are quite happy um, to get a guilt payment from me as opposed to the regular one they get. Um, but I recognize that feeling, and I, so I feel a little bit for them. I mean, in fairness, the, the, the Israelites, the, the, especially because God mentions this, you know, you, and your little ones who you thought would become booty, that's how we all started, because I laughed at booty, but they say that they want to protect their children. I get that. I completely understand that. Um, I know I've told the story a long time ago, but, but like, and this is more than a lifetime ago. Oh my gosh. Um, 30 plus years. I, 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 I worked at, at the uh, Toronto AIDS clinic. Um, and, uh, it was, a, it was a, a different time, but, um, some, some people, um, wore, you know, masks, gowns, and gloves. Uh, and some of us, didn't. We thought it was more humanizing. We didn't want to dehumanize people who were dying of HIV disease. Uh, and, and so bare hands, no mask. Um, and then I got attacked by somebody who was in the, in, 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 in a demented state and there was blood and all of a sudden I realized I was putting my wife and children at risk, a risk that they had not bought into. Right? They hadn't been hired. They hadn't been taken on at a clinic that no longer exists, but it came part of Casey House, but the Toronto AIDS Clinic. They, they didn't sign up for that. I had. And so I um, 
well, I, I went into masks and, and, and gowns and, uh, um, I, I wasn't going to renew a contract there anyway because I was called into congregational ministry and then I was I was ordained. So um, I don't know whether I would have renewed my, my time there if I would have stayed. I'm not sure exactly if I would have because um, because I was afraid for my children all of a sudden. Um, I don't think of it. I didn't think of it at the time as being afraid for myself, but I was afraid for my children. So when I hear the Israelites wanting to protect their children and not take risks, even though God's telling them to, I get it. I would defend them by saying it was a time of time of discernment. We'll send the spies out. And yeah, then we shook in our tents and we were afraid, but, but we were working our way through that. So I want to sort of plead with God. But no, but that's not how the story goes. God got angry at them and... And I understand that too. <laughs> Obviously, I'm going to say I understand God. Oh no, um, I'm on God's side always. But I do. I, I appreciate God's position in this too. But I appreciate the people, and it's a hard place to be. And so God does punish them. But when you think about it, God's punishment is not. It's not as cruel a punishment as you might imagine, because the children that you sought to protect, they are going to inherit the land. So they are going to get it. If that really is what you wanted to do was to secure the future for your children, then don't worry, they are going to get it. But you're not. So out you guys go into the wilderness. And they're going to be in the wilderness now for another 35 plus years because it'll take 40 years to get there. Right? So uh, away they go. And that's why it took so long. You know, you, you, we used to joke about when we were kids, like, how could you get lost? And I mentioned the beginning of, the beginning of this passage, like, it says it could have done it in 11 days. Why was it 40 years? Well, now, you know, because they weren't trusting. They weren't trusting God. Uh, they were trying to... They were trying to insert their wisdom in place of God's word. And we do that too, right? <laughs> we do that. We'll hear... The gospel, we hear God's word. We're pretty pretty clear about it, but it's a little harsh. So we'll, we'll smooth it down a little bit. Take the pointed edge off just a bit, you know. We'll, because our wisdom is that the people won't get it. They'll be offended. They'll be afraid. They'll be whatever they'll be. So we'll just, we'll, we'll just, we'll just dull the edge a little bit. Inserting our wisdom um, for God's word. And yet, I am a preacher, and that is my job to take my wisdom so that I might share God's word in a way that people can hear it. Thank you for wondering with me <laughs> about my job and what I do. Um, find that interesting. How, how often do I insert my wisdom for God's will? Um, I mean, I'm supposed to use my wisdom, my gifts, my skills. So are you. We're supposed to use all these things that we might discern God's will, that we might live into it. But it's a fine line between discerning it and inserting yours instead of allowing your wisdom to shape the thing that you are trying to hear or trying to find. It's worth asking yourself from time to time, what's really going on here? Hmm. Another thing that I find interesting in this one, uh, and again, maybe that's why it hits me personally. Maybe that's why I had to laugh at Booty. Uh, just a little room here. Um, Joshua, one of the people who's going to make it in to the, to, to, to the promised land. Joshua, son of Nun, your assistant shall enter there. Encourage him, for he's the one who will secure Israel's possession of it. So Moses is being told... So, pal, you've done a great job, um, and uh, and I'm going to need you out there for the next 35, 40 years. Uh, still doing a great job, even though you guys are just walking in circles and going nowhere. I'm going to need you to do that. Um, but ultimately, the corner office is going to your assistant. So what I'd like you to do is to train him so that he is worthy of that office, the office that you're never going to get. Hmm. 
I have a minister friend who is uh, part of a broad inter integrated team. It's interesting, uh, and one of the one of the jobs that that, that they've been entrusted with is helping impart wisdom to the minister who is the face of the ministry. We don't usually use we don't use terms like senior in in, in, in my, my, my program, but but basically the lead minister that you know but 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 one of their jobs is will you help this person be even better at their job? Will you help them be help them be better at the job that is above yours, in a sense? Will you help them be greater than you? That's what God's asking Moses here. Encourage him. Help Joshua be greater than you. I've read lots of books, seen lots of movies, know lots of stories, you know, and the <clears throat> the teacher whose greatest joy is seeing is seeing their students surpass them. Feeling, wow, I was part of that. And I love those stories, and I have had moments where I have felt great joy and pride uh, in the achievements of somebody that I have maybe mentored or helped or done something with along the way. But I've also had petty moments when I've kind of wondered, well, why, why is that me? I, I taught. Why am I not? Why can't I have your success? I taught you all that stuff. In fact, I'm, I'm better at some of that stuff, I think, than you are. And how come you're... Huh. Now, I, I really mean this. I'm not obsessed by those things. But I have those fleeting thoughts that will go through my head from time to time. Not recently and not about anybody you know. <laughs> no, really not, 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 not recently, not often. But just every now and again. How good are we at helping people rise above us? teach them to be better at something because I think a lot of us are tempted to help people become maybe as good as we are um, maybe not quite as good the, the, <laughs> the legend is <laughs> that my grandmother was uh, well I, I, this isn't legend this is true I, I remember uh, my grandmother I had a grandmother who was a phenomenal cook just a magnificent cook, um, good at baking, good at sweets, good at full meals, good at everything. You named it, she could do it brilliantly. <clears throat> and people would often ask for her recipes. It had to have her recipe because it was so good. And I want to do that myself at home. And so legend has it that my grandmother would, my Nana, would give them the recipe. But she'd change the measurements or leave one ingredient out. <laughs> she wanted to help, but she didn't want them to make lemon meringue pie that was better than hers. <laughs> and I love that. I really, truly do. Um, <laughs> and maybe she was doing this as a practical joke, so I should also mention she was a practical joker. She did, she did like to, to, to trick people. Um, but I suspect that it was more of like, no, I want you to be good. I just don't want you to be as good as me. And here's Moses, who is going to go out and basically walk around in circles. He's going to do a make work project for the next almost 40 years. And while he's doing that, he's also going to train up Joshua to surpass him. That's faith for me. To me, that's faith enough that Moses should be allowed to go into the promised land. Um, but anyway, um, that's faith. That's trusting God so much so that you know it doesn't hurt you to help others. You know that that's another person's success does not make you look like a failure. That's faith in God, I think. That's, 
At least that's when my faith is strongest. That's where I am. I, I just want everyone to succeed. Uh, whether I get credit for it or don't get credit for it, whether I get to be at the, at, the, at the victory celebration or whether I'm left at home babysitting, I don't care. But that's when I am in my best relationship with God. I know what God wants me to do and I love doing it whether anybody notices it or not. That's when my faith is strongest. When I start to feel a little petty or a little jealous, that's when I realize it's not... It's not so much that jealousy is, is, is taking over, it's that my faith is diminishing a little bit. I need to refocus. I need to focus on my relation with God because my, my worth is established in the fact that God loves me. I'm good right there. So I need to remind myself how God loves me and I need to work on that relationship. And in doing that, fine. God wants me to walk around in circles for 35 years, I got it. And if God wants me to train somebody, help somebody become better than I'll ever be, I can do that because I know that I'm already set with God. I'm right with God. When I'm not willing to do that, it's not that I have to grow up. It's that I need to reinvest in my faith, spend a little more time talking to God. Yeah, you know what? I think I'm going to let it go there. Uh, and I'm just going to offer a prayer. This whole thing started because I I laughed at Booty. <laughs> um, but yeah, I've appreciated the chance to just wonder out loud about this stuff. And I hope that it's inspired something for you. But for now, let us pray. Loving God, thank you. Thank you for these moments when ancient history speaks to present day when things that happened to other people so long ago strike a chord with us personally in our time in our place and in that your word emerges thank you god for the way that we can hear your voice when we dare to wonder to ask the next question and God, as we hear that voice, may we be drawn to that voice. And in that, may our faith grow. We pray in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, through the Holy Spirit. Amen. So that's enough of me today, but I do look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Until I get to see you, God bless. You know what that means, right? God sees you and loves you exactly as you are. God's love surrounds you. But more than surrounds you, it also emanates from you, moves through you out into the world, and you make a difference just by being in the world. So thank you for being you. God bless you. See you tomorrow.